Oh, good. It's live. We are live. We are live. Good morning. Good from morning, Adams. everyone. It's behind so I can you get comfortable. Shadow. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is a Monday water time instead of a Friday tea time. We are Paros. Let me just make sure this also works here. What we're going to do. Um, so give us one second. What are you doing? Okay, it gets just very dark here when you do yeah. that. Okay. I mean, you can't come see, but it just gets much darker. That makes it a little lighter. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. We're just trying to get adjusted here. If you're joining, in, can you let us know if the audio is working well? And let me just go ahead and. Um, Check in here. Okay, if you are with us, can you please just let us know if you can? Um, let me just see. You can hear us well, please. We are um, sharing this video in our room because we attempted to be outside. It's so beautiful, the scenery, but the winds are so like excess today. I mean, it's just so extreme. And uh, so we decided let's just do the video here and it's just it. But we just want to make sure the audio is coming in. So I know somebody's watching, whoever is watching, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining in. Can you just let me know, let us know, is the audio well? Can you hear us well? And Michael, what do you feel like? Um, you can turn this light on maybe because I, but, feel, I feel like I'm in your shadow of. Yeah? Yeah. Are you okay? So why don't you put the? <laughs> it's not plugged in. Maybe there's a plug underneath here. Um, I think because this is come, we should just close that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Can you close it. Yeah. Would you? Okay. And let me see if maybe we'll, I will turn this on, on, on the. YouTube, give us one second, please. Sorry, we're just trying to get adjusted here. Uh, okay, we'll open it up live here as well. No, I don't want to do that here. I'm just going to keep it right here. Okay, so, is that better? Yeah. Yeah, the light goes and comes and nice, no, really dark. <laughs> huh? Yeah, open up just a little. Huh? Maybe those Maybe lights. Maybe these lights. Let me do this. That's and, and maybe that light. Sorry. <laughs> it looks really dark on our end. I can't no it, it it becomes that that one. It's so funny the temperature. It's a little bit better. Let me adjust this one too. We've been trying to figure we don't need AC. I'm gonna get too cold. Is it's not warm in here. It's a little warm. Oh, well, we can put the AC. Hi, I will put on 24, 25. Okay, this is. That's it. Open it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just do we what just we need to do. Like if you sit one way and I sit it, then your your shadow won't block me. Okay, I don't want my shadow to block you. Okay. It is as, as it is. <laughs> <laughs> we attempted all morning uh, trying to figure out where to be. I wish we could just like live video up for you to see. It's so beautiful, but it's very um, challenging mm -hmm. with it. So finally, we're so grateful to have Wi-Fi. We missed having Wi-Fi. Though we had Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi did not work these um, really didn't work well in these three days in Naxos. And we wanted to update everything from um, Milos because uh, we did our full video from Santorini and Mykonos, mm -hmm. but we never got a chance to do our one week video for me. And we really felt because these six days in Milos, there was so much experience mm -hmm. and it really deserved its own, um, it really its own experience. And I feel we'll probably do a third video Capturing. Well, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we wrap it up with. Yeah, um, I mean, I feel the six days we can explain today because they're. No, no, I know, but uh, maybe 
Well, let's see how it goes. Sure. We can wrap it up. So thank you so much for joining us. So we, we feel like we wanted to really share this as we left off the last one. We were um, in Mykonos and in Santorini, and we explained why we didn't make it to Egypt and everything that took place. So you can watch that video uh, as well that's on Facebook that will also be updated on uh, on uh, YouTube. It haven't, hasn't been... Uh, uploaded in YouTube because it was on Facebook, I think. Because there was the yeah, the, the, the Wi Fi didn't work. <laughs> Either way, in Milos, we had a most magical, incredible, just extraordinary experience because it's, it's interesting as each island we go to, we're learning of the unique nature of it. And Milos, I feel, really, really touched our hearts because it, it, it showed something that was. You know what, can, can you hold your thought for one second, baby? Sure. Because I feel what we did the last time, we recorded the video and we did, and it was on Facebook too. So let me just, just open up live stream on okay. Facebook sure. and then we start. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, here we go. Okay, so where is the live that I can press? This is very interesting. There you go. Okay. It is what it is. Yeah. So here we go. We're starting. So thank you so much, Facebook Live, for joining us. And thank you to our YouTube Live. They've been on with us for the last seven minutes mm -hmm. as we try to get adjusted with this room that we are in and the sound and the light and what have you. So here we are. And thank you so Good much. Good morning, Good morning Good for house. joining us. So, so much love from Paros as we felt it was so necessary to finally have our own time to go over everything that took place in uh, Milos mm -hmm. because we have not had proper internet in Naxos the last three days. We've been there to capture everything and to go over just so much. So we're finally here mm -hmm. trying to catch up. Good morning, Doreen. Um, good morning, Doreen. So much wow, love to you. Very early. Good morning. You're to you. very. You're up early. Up it's early. eleven thirty-eight here. Four four thirty there. Wow. Lots of love to you. You have your tea. Yes. <laughs> so we have our um, water today because we, we haven't been able to do Friday tea time. It's just what it is. So we really wanted to give the give a whole dedication to Milos as Milos has played an important role for us being positioned there for 1010 as, um, as Egypt uh, sort of went apart as some of you watched the last video that we shared. That last video talked about why we didn't make it to Egypt and everything that took place um, between Mykonos and Santorini and the details of the activation of the crystalline diamond codes of light that we did in the north and southern part of Santorini, a very important part, the south, east and west and north east and west and why these four corners had to be cleared, the crystalline diamond codes activated in them and and the work that we had to do together in Santorini, where it is positioned before we were able to then go to the mainland, go to Milos, Milos. for mm -hmm. the 1010 start gate. Uh, so why don't we just keep continuing? Yeah. Okay, just keep continuing. Let's... Um, I will keep continuing. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue. And uh, the other part of it was why we were positioned in in uh, Milos and the work that we had to do. So we wanted to just go over just starting off getting to Milos and everything that had to do with Milos. Because some of you have watched the have watched the uh, the pictures and the videos and just arrival there, and then we'll get into the ten ten. Yeah. So. 
we left Santorini and uh, with the... Well, we, we left with the intention of Santorini that um, Milos was right by and, and, and we knew that when Egypt shifted that our original plan was to go to Milos right after Egypt, but we never got there because the plane mysteriously canceled our plane tickets. So we knew Milos was a very, very special island from what we've heard. We knew that it had the, some of the most incredible beaches. We knew that there was just a very precious aspect of Milos that was being called upon this. So I remember originally, you know, expressing, honey, let's, let, let, let's take a, a good amount of time, like six days to yeah. spend there because we've been, you know, island hopping two days, three days, but we knew this would be a great time to really um, nourish our health and well-being and, and spend a really good amount of time with Milos. Yes. So what was so interesting, so from we booked our um, we booked our flight and not flight, we booked our ferry, ferry. as they so, and uh, we, um, we we find an Airbnb at the cutest, most precious Airbnb we found, and. Uh, and so we booked it there, and it was sort of like away from town. Mm -hmm. And we went ahead, and uh, and the lady was so precious. Mm -hmm. So it was so interesting. Her name was Sophia. So as soon as uh, we we booked it, and her name was Sophia, we knew okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. We're in the right place. We are working with Sophia to code our life, awakening onto the planet. So we're exactly in the right place. And we read so, on her reviews that she is the most beautiful woman that not only pick this up from the port, but she supplies fruits and teas and cakes and all the necessary levels. She's one that goes out of her way to um, organize, you know, from car to what areas to see. And she just had this huge heart to really open up the door in our arrival. Because, and it was and it was so refreshing because yeah. coming from Santorini, we really, there wasn't really that much kindness or well, the heart was missing the heart was it, very because missing because in Santorini. Because in Santorini. But the kindness, like it was just very rough. Yeah. Right? Well, in Santorini, because it because it, it focuses on a very high end crowd and it was like get in and get in let's, out. Let's not make excuses yeah. for what it is. Let's just state what no, it was. But, that, that, but, but people that's the reason were not right, it's, well, it's a very elite whatever but whatever, yeah. well, whatever it was. All I'm saying is that it was so refreshing. He was person with airbnb so kind so nice so loving that it was just refreshing right so she offered we, we had asked her to because we needed a we knew milos you need a car we asked for car rental so she organized the car rental with us with another uh, lady named isabella and it was so amazing um, as as we arrived, she said she offered. She's like, "We'll pick you up. I'll pick you up from the port." We're like, "Wow, this is so nice." She's like, "Since you get in late, you don't need a car for you know you need a car next day. This helps save you money too." I mean, it's just so so incredibly mm -hmm. conscious. So we got there. She picked us up and we arrived um, to her location. And the room was this small little room studio. So as we came in, really precious, mm -hmm. adorable, but it couldn't have been more smaller because by, by the time like Michael and I opened our suitcase, we had <laughs> barely any room to move around. And uh, so as we got there, she came and she explained everything to us. Here's this, here's this, here's a good restaurant, here's this, but it's the end of the season, just about everything's closed. And, it was, said, no and it was in a very cute part of Mila, it's called Polonia, which yeah. is at the corner tip and just had uh, beautiful cafes, restaurants, and a very, just a very uh, nurturing section. Sometimes when you come into ports, there's a, a lot of crowded energies, and there it was beautiful, only 15 minutes away from the port in the corner, which... The main was, port. From the main port, which was uh, positioned incredibly in front of the island, uh, Kimelos. So we had a, a very picturesque um place to stay, let alone in a cute area that had like, you know, somewhat of a small Mykonos feel from the tiled um, floors when you walk into town and just the nature of what we saw when we first arrived. But very, not very in Polonia, in, in, the, in the other part, in Plaka. Right. So anyway, so he, here's how life begins. So we have six days here, we come in and it's this tiny place, it's adorable. And we're like, oh, okay, wow. So where's the water? We walk downstairs. It's literally right in front of the water, but not like ocean or anything like that. It's all these like rock formations of volcanic, like quite incredible. And if you see the videos, you'll see how remarkable it is. And a little bit windy. 
So, so always, always good. We, you know, we picked up our car, rent on a little Suzuki with, you know, tops off and little back Jeep. and little Jeep. And um, so we went, we slept. And then the next morning, the very first thing was the hammers, hammers um, starting up. So we wanted to do our prayer, and that was very, very uncomfortable. And the next door was doing their construction, building a hotel, which we didn't know. And I looked at Michael, I was like, there is no way one big here starting the morning at 7, 7 30 in the morning, right next door, hammers construction. So right away we messaged Sophia. And here's here's what's amazing because life brings you always all these experiences. There, not, there weren't that many places to rent in Milos, and the, the place that we were the last guest at um, Sophia's place, and the other um, places were pretty much, they didn't have much opening because it's just the end of the season. And here we are, we have our planetary work to fulfill for 1010, and uh, and we, we need we need just our rest, but when we wake up and our morning prayer is very important. But you get to know people in interaction. So right away, I, e- I emailed Sophia. I said, e- I said, Sophia, there's a big problem. There's no way we can stay here. It is it is the sound of the hammers. I, I can't have that. That gives me a headache. First thing starting with this, and it goes throughout. So she came right away, precious heart. And she felt so bad. And she said, you know, they, they had stopped the construction throughout the season they just started yesterday so that means the day before we the day that we arrived the day before they started construction and um and this is also naturally affecting her but she was so gracious so gracious like let me help you find another place because it's through airbnb i can't refund you but let me help you find another place i'll pay for it we were so touched mm-hmm. by her and it happened to be in where she was she has another unit that's a two bedroom that, that's a one bedroom and this studio and, and it faces the ocean and where, faces where right the, the water. water and you could and that could actually drown out the construction and the construction mind you it was only three people so it yeah. wasn't like a full-on crew it wasn't a full-on level it was like three people that at times were hammering and it reminded me very much like of mexico where they would start the project rest start the project so there was there was sounds, but it wasn't like a constant drilling sound all day long. It was just more so in the morning, and they would break, and then they would come back and forth. But it was beautiful because, in her kindness of heart, she offered her apartment, which was you know double the charge, but she kept it the same as the studio for us. So we went to check out the well, other studio, well, the, the, the other place, because she literally was like, "Here, check this place out." And we went over. She called the lady. We went over to the place. We looked at it and. We could actually hear more construction, a louder construction noise. And I you know, spoke to Honey. I said, Honey, this is a gift opening up. Let's see if we can look at this apartment. And maybe the sounds from the sea, and because we're at an angle where the cement is facing, that this could be a golden opportunity. We're not only getting an upgrade, but for an uh, inexpensive price that provides us more space and, and an even you know, beautiful view of itself. There's the wind itself. <laughs> so we we so she opened up the apartment and we were just like wow it's like double the space cute little living room had a bed that opened up two doors to the ocean and it, it was precious it was it was very very beautiful and i know honey was still kind of you know leery about it because of the noise but i was it was amazing when we were there we couldn't hear the noise because this if you can imagine it, two other apartments blocking the construction actually drowned it out so it opened up Beautiful opportunity. What, what was amazing is that the, the guests that were staying that they were leaving that that day. So she just generously, she's like, listen, these are the last because if you want one, you just take this. And just that compassion, that kind, that loving energy was so incredible. It was so beautiful. So we moved our stuff. We went throughout the day and she was so cute. She's like, go, go out the rest of the day. Don't come back till later. So we wanted to go explore and we said, okay, let's just go explore just to get accumul- uh, accumulated to the area because we have um, we also needed some time to figure out exactly some of the locations we needed to be. We had pulled up a couple of the places for 1010, but we, we needed a little bit more time just to get adjusted to the island and then to see where we needed to be. So it, it was it was quite, I have to say, like 
that first day of full day in Milos, we had, because the next day was the planetary healing, correct? So we had one day on 10-9, and we said, okay, let's go to several places and get ourselves um, situated. So as, as we started the day, and it was so beautiful, she has a full basket of fruits and foods for us, just such kindness. And I'm, I'm really saying this because... Um, um, there's been this um, coldness um, in uh, the, the, the warmth that you, you feel, like, for example, in some of the other countries, you don't feel that, or you don't, I don't, I didn't really feel that in Greece. Um, this is, I've been here before as well. But, like, every now and then you get someone like Sophia that's just like, wow like just a wow it was so 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 refreshing so we went and um, we, we started with the west coast of the southwest southwest part of the island and it was beautiful because Milos you definitely need a car and it's very very raw so as we started driving we were just like awe and wow by this space, by how uh, little is being built, although they're starting to build more, and also how wide it is and the level of nature, the level of nature and, and the different trains, the different um, terrains, terrains. terrains, the different uh, platforms of nature and the rocks and the formations was truly extraordinary from one to another, from one part of the island to another. So the first one that we went to, this beautiful rocky beach, mm -hmm. obviously, and amazing water. And again, all of them, you come in, a little bit of a dirt road, then you see this vast formation of the most rawest kind of like cliffs that come in and then it's the little bit of the beach area and um, water and very little is built so in yeah. this first one there was only like one hotel yeah. and one restaurant and the whole part is just raw yeah. very, very undeveloped and very it, undeveloped and what's, what's amazing is when when driving there you're, you're going through roads that on either side of the road you see the rocks you see yes. a lot of cave-like structures that are in there and then when you get to the beach you go down so that there's these multicolored cliffs from all sorts of yellows and reds and oranges and then a beautiful, beautiful beach, sandy beach, but then the sand meets the rocks. So here's like, a, it is one of the pictures just driving so you can see the, just, just the incredible nature. Yeah, the formations, formations of the land like another remarkable. planet, very, very colorful, very red and, and, What's amazing is it, it gives you the opportunity to feel like you're exploring uncharted area because there's very little in between and very safe, very easy, and not that far to go from different parts of the island. It was 15 minutes here, 20 minutes here. And this was the first, I would this was the first beach we were exploring, and you see it's just very, very little built. And the water being very turquoise, clear, refreshing, a little cool, but... Just amazing. I've, I've gone to many oceans and seas throughout the world, and to swim there and to open my eyes in the sea, you can really see that the saline or the salt contact is not as strong as you would see in yeah. other areas. So it was beautiful to go there. Um, once again, we find that we're very fortunate to go during a time period where it's not that crowded and to a place that it just feels extremely peaceful. That the, the type of people that we're encountering just seems like it's a very chilled and laid back area and of course michael and i when we're in raw nature the kid part of us really can't we have to pull over every rock all these things so here was another one we see i was like michael get go go so michael had to get over there and just just to climb this because these colors are remarkable just to have another picture of it like we just get super excited when we when we see these things and then him trying to come down like the, the rock formations is just incredible driving. So it is so nourishing to the eye. Like, look, I'm like, Michael, pull over. I just have to take a picture because it's, it's, it, I, I just felt my eyes were so 
satisfied and nurtured by the rawness of Mother Nature and how Mother Nature was just, and, it, and here was our little car, uh, was able to um, Jimmy just, Suzuki. Yeah, support us. And then... Um, and it felt like another planet. There was like when, when you're driving there and you're seeing all the colors and how it's mixed in with the bright blue sky and just the energies around and, and really very, very desolate. Like when you're driving there, there's a lot of times where you may see one car then you get to the beach and like, oh, there's actually people here. But it's a, an island that I feel we're very fortunate because it just didn't feel like there was a lot going on. Even during the low season, other islands, there's been people. But meanless, it was it was relatively quiet. Quiet. And so from there, we visited a couple of beaches right there just to check them out. But then we wanted to come up towards Plaka. So we knew Plaka is the area where the sunset is. And the, the highest part of the island, there are two parts. One is this one. One is the um, Saint uh, Prophetess. Pro mm -hmm. No. Said a uh, uh, Eli, uh, it's Eli. Prof they call it Prophetess Eli. I think so. I can't yeah, and those are two. so we knew for ten ten we needed to get to both. So, but Plaka was easier, and Plaka was a very very important part in Milos because it was the part where the old castle was there, but also the highest church that they had built there, the highest point. And I knew this is this very sacred place that. We knew we needed to be because underneath it was where the ancient um, theater was also located. So here we 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 came to this part. This is by um, this is at looking um, from the uh, from the, the the lower part of the church. So we wanted to sort of check it out and and catch the sun sunset. Mm -hmm. And then we had to um, let me just see. We had to hike up a little bit more. Let me just show you. By the way, they're very good with cats here. The whole, it's been cat heaven here. There's so much kindness towards cats here. It's so nice. The nicest cats ever. We also. never made it to Egypt, but the feline and the cats are all over Greece. All over. And I'll tell you, for stray cats, I've never seen more clean, more friendly. Look, in the store, cats, cats. are all over. And they really, they really take nature to them they, they yeah. take a lot of light and love and it's been um it's just been really beautiful to see how they welcome the animals here compared to other places so i wanted to show this to you so this part placa was very important we needed to come all the way up so we wanted to know where we were because this this we had to get a feel for it because this was one of the parts that we would have been for 1010 Stargate. So again, because we were in an ISIS temple that we were supposed to be in Egypt in um, in Aswan. So here then we were positioned in Milos, and Milos we still needed to connect to um, the ISIS energy. We still had our work with the Crystal and Diamond codes. We still had the Crystal and Diamond activation and also the Yeshua Magdalene frequency and the Sophia's codes. We have done our big part in, in Santorini, which was a very important part in the fourth direction. Then we needed to come to Milos and this significant part. So we started out, so that, that was the, that was pretty much our day on Tuesday before Wednesday's 10, 10. Mm -hmm. Now, the other part is, um, we came, rested, got ready for early in the morning. So in Polonia, where we were for 1010, we wanted to be in Polonia because there's one particular church at the very, very corner tip of it. This church is very significant because this church is about the lover's church. And uh, well, it's not the lover's church. The church was built on this, this tip area that was considered to be for the lovers. And Milos is the energy of the lovers so we knew being positioned there is to help bring this sacred divine feminine sacred divine masculine and interesting enough a lot of a lot of things between us was also coming up for us to view that lover energy that 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 beloved energy between us so i want to show this to you because um we knew we would start out our prayer right at this tip this tip was very, very significant where we were because, again, we were working with 
all the way up North Finland, going up even higher, all the way down to um, Johannesburg, uh, South Africa, and also to the Middle East and Asia, as well as Europe and going towards the West in America. So we're working with these four, and also the crystalline diamond, the ginormous diamond part of it, and also this Atlantis energy. And it was this, this island, like just like Santeria, I keep feeling, oh my God, as this Atlantis energy is ginormous here. The Atlantic beings are here. The, the aqua beings are here. They're all in these mountains. Like, wow, the ancient beings. Um, just like Milos, I felt it in Naxos too, but Milos, like the rock beings, the, 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 the interdimensional beings are so powerful here. So um, I want to show this to you because... And when we went to the tip there, it was, it was amazing because on the tip, it, it gives a very beautiful perspective of not only the islands around there, but also the water that's directly underneath us. We felt like we were on this tip, but there were like caves underneath us. There was this beautiful um, church with an anchor and just the geography of how they place the rocks almost into like a horizontal vertical position on the anchor there. Well, we'll show you. So this is the church, right? And this church, this is St. Nicholas's church. This is very important. And it's so significant that it has the anchor here. And the black, if, if for those of you that know symbol, symbology, you know what we're working with. This is the dismantling that we've been working with, the grid line that has to do with the Vatican's. And, um, and this is, it's built uh, right over this. So the water is underneath. So allowing the water to uh, keep purifying yet it is dedicated to that beloved energy so we knew the Yeshua Magdalene energy is very powerful like imagine the church is right built above here and the other part of it let me show you and of course I, I see a giant heart as we're going that's a ginormous thing so this is Michael and I doing our prayer we still were connecting with the Isis energy as we started the day and this was the first portion of our planetary healing where we, we set up the medicine wheel. Uh, and we can't get into the details of what we did here. And let me just show this to you. So this anchor is very interesting. One part of it shows this, which still has the onk here. And then the other part of it, you see that? And the other part of it, uh, where... We're standing in here, and Michael and I bringing our energies into it. Michael standing on one side, me representing the other side, the sacred divine feminine, sacred divine masculine. And, and this was the next, the top of the island we needed to go. That was the second portion of it. So we started out at St. Nicholas's Church to help bring the crystalline diamond codes of light there. And again, Michael is working um, quite a bit with the vertical axis as I'm working with the horizontal axis to, to spiral the energy. So the, the cyclics of these um, Greek islands is very important, the energy being, um, the frequency being uh, circulated. So the, the crystalline diamond codes of light and it was there that it was shown to me each of these islands, the center of them is crystalline diamond and it is connected to a ginormous crystalline diamond. And and so we were activating this huge portion of the, um, from all of it again, from Finn, uh, higher up than Finland down to uh, Johannesburg, but also extending all the way towards Washington, D.C., and even further to Mexico, to Rio, and coming back to help the activation of these crystal dynamic codes of life because it's a, it was a huge part of. Greece plays a huge part of the, the vibration of the frequency of the golden age that they knew the, the gods have been here. They were here. That's why there's so many sacred temples here. We got a chance to tap into some of that. And, and, and it's interesting where we, where we're located that a lot of the times we're positioned where these churches are, are, are placed because where these churches are, are very, very powerful, high vibrational frequencies. So it's, it's, it's really unique when we start looking where we go 
were guided, and it's it, we almost laugh because like, oh look, there's another church, there's another church because where these churches are placed, it's they're you know they they know where the power points of the lands are, and so as we are gone from each place, whether how high it is, whether it's in a cave, whether it's a mountain, it's just so unique that even in some of the highest places on the island, there's a church, there's an area that 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 we go to, and it's just I find when we go into that and what we tap into is real is you know is really helping to purify those areas and really bring Absolutely. forth our energies of the sacred divine masculine, the sacred divine feminine, and bringing that purification because we know that you know these areas obviously have been hijacked in just different areas and different realms. So it's and clear the Vatican energy. Mm -hmm. Can you turn that that's a little mm -hmm. cool yeah. and clear that Vatican energy. And that's why St. Nicholas Church was very important because it has the black, black and white checkers. And we know what that reprints for those of you that you know, you know exactly what that is and it's the dismantling of that to, to allow the the pure the purest come in. Before Michael and I came together for a period of two years in the planetary uh, ascension, uh, especially the uh, the planetary mission, I was positioned in these very specific churches to help um, dismantle and bring the the crystalline Christed frequency all around it and, and open it up. So it's been very, very interesting, just just extremely interesting. So that was the first portion of ours. Then once we completed that, and each time we would come sit in the meditation together and also doing the part, and I had my Magdalene sand that um, I took around it and my people had certain crystals that he had to bury into it. Then we went uh, to the next portion, which was a placa. And that's the picture that I just show you, which is the highest portion of the island. In the, the first highest portion, the second highest portion of the island that's actually reachable. And so there's this church and, and we get a chance again to hike quite a bit, hike quite a bit. And let me just tell you, after like, we've been hiking, like so much is everything is going up like this. Like our body parts, we felt like it's like just falling apart. Like from knees, backs, everything just hurting. Like just there's, hurting, there's, just hurting. There's many stairs and many, many rocks. Many stairs. And it's and interesting what happens to you when after being on sand tree and hiking all aspects of the island there and then coming here and then hiking up and down, hiking up and down. Because usually throughout the day, there's quite a bit of journey and then to rise all the way up and all the way down it. It does put uh, a lot of physical stress Straight on the body. It. So the second portion of it, this is again, these are all on my our Facebook page. So this 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 shows the top of the church that I just showed you where we were, and then so we did our part also here with the um, activation and and doing the. Um, I'll show you in just a second. Um, there's the we planted. Um, we put a medicine wheel here also and did what we needed to do on this part which was the top part and and it's also on top of the this part for me felt very heavy energy because it was also the area where they had put the fortresses and the castle the old roman castle, castle was it and there was a lot of milos was one of the milos was extremely wealthy and milos was also one of the islands that was heavily attacked by um also the Romans, there was a lot of this fighting battles. I felt there was just a lot of that fighting energy there that didn't feel very good to me right on top there, though the, the top, top portion of it. And also um, it, it didn't feel inviting at all. Uh, though coming down, the town itself was cute. And also the other part is, again, um, the way it's positioned was to help um, one of the things that most people don't know, Greece, many, many, many years ago, they were they were subjected to so many of the, uh, especially these islands, um, the pirates, and a lot of the, um, a lot of the, sort of like, the damage that the islands experienced by the pirates. And um, two years ago, we did quite a bit of clearing in Crete by also the the rape and all of that hurt they did that done to the woman and the children mm -hmm. there. And also they buried a lot of their treasures here. So there's been a lot of these battles 
in here. And it's interesting to see the land also, parts of the land that are uh, they're excavated and there's a lot of minerals that are coming from the land as well just to notice the the land itself it's in a very huge desert terrain so yes. we so when we're going through a lot of it you know the conditions of very dry very windy and you know with milos uh, again an island it didn't really have a lot of green it was just a lot of rugged you know volcanic rock a lot of um quarries that are there that you can see what they're doing with the land there but but extreme extremely beautiful extremely um, breathtaking and it's, you know, it feels like it's like an adventure when you're there because there's so many extraordinary pieces of the land that um, are But I was, I was more focusing on the 1010, Michael, what, what the 1010 represented and, and especially being on top there, working with that energy because the 1010 stargate, this one, one energy, this one gateway in bringing these crystalline diamond coats here, and especially the top portion of the island where we were, bringing it to help clear this so this clearing can go again from this island outwards and start spiraling the energy to all these other islands. And so my, my where I was really focused was connecting it to the, to the crystalline diamond of each of the other islands and allowing the giant formation of the crystalline diamonds to circulate. So the, the feminine aspect of it to begin circulating this energy so that the purification, the cleansing can really take place. But then you go on a tangent of you know, I'm like still staying on okay. 10, 10, my love. Yeah, <laughs> so like stay, I know, but so I know, we lost this amazing. Let's just stick to, to this. Then, um, so after, after that, we came down and we knew we needed to go right away to the ancient theater. So this ancient theater was so, so, so significant because this, the other part, uh, in Milos, what was so significant is the is is is, is an island that is really embraced by Aphrodite. And though Aphrodite, you know, you know, they say she was born out of a foam, and uh, and she, you know, there's a lot of myths about her. And Milos is all about the beauty and love and that energy and Milos really represents the feminine energy because it's in its rawness, in its gloriousness, in its vastness and its power. And I felt like some of these areas that we went, we could feel the rawness from the, from the caves to the coves to the formation, which we'll talk about in just a minute as well. So it was interesting how the top of the um, top of this placa was this church and where the castle was, and then trickling down, then there was the ancient theater. Mm -hmm. So as we drove down, again, it's middle of the day, it's hot, we're exhausted, we're hiking up and down, and we park and we walk towards the ancient theater. And, what's and that's a full video. And what's beautiful about the ancient theater is it's facing the ocean, it's facing the highest point of the mountain and the way that you look at the ancient theater uh, right away this is when we did every time we did the work on top we came down look there's a heart right there we saw a lot of heart and then we we're going towards the ancient theater and within the ancient theater it was beautiful just to see the the semicircle of amazing marble and the way they structured it because it it really brought us back to when we sat there of just the energy of, of the theater and the land and the love of what was the position. And they did a great job of helping um, remodel it because there was obviously older parts, but they brought in the newer aspects of the tile. And just to sit in that energy, and I felt what was very fortunate is we had the ability to be there by ourselves and to just really feel the energy and, and, no, really, guards. and, and, and no guards and, and just feel what it was like in our presence of the guides around us, the presence of, being in a vast, beautiful area and just the presence of a theater where there was so much art, so much creativity, so much dynamic level of energy that you could feel within all of the ancient artifacts around. Because when you first walked in, they had pieces, ancient yeah. pieces that were carved oh, sure. as you walked in. And then they actually allowed you to walk into the theater and to sit Here's along the, the seats of the theater. So we each had the opportunity to 
sit in a theater. It was wonderful. Honey I actually went to the center. Well, it was it was sort of as as you'll see there. There's like an eight minute video. Uh, I try to capture everything just as we were experiencing it for the first time, so you could see it as as we went down into it I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god and so Michael was on top and and I just wanted to I just wanted to create sound to experience this is such a dream moment just to see what what's it like because they would they would sing to the gods in these ancient theaters the, the whole purpose of it was to invoke the presence of gods and goddesses. So here it was, nobody's there, not a song, it's just Michael and I in the middle of the day. So I was like, Michael, Michael, please video. So you'll see on that video there too, you know, I go right in the, right in, again, is right in the center of it. Hold on one second, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, uh, here's Michael sitting, not that you can see him, here's a little bit cool. And it's this, it's this incredible, beautiful theater and I'm um I'm in the middle of it so I just want to experience it because the way they, they created they know the sound vibration will go up and it was amazing Michael being on top and I just started creating the sound and the light language and the codes you can hear it so clearly and so precisely there's no microphone nothing i'm right in the center so they knew the degrees the way to put this to create that vibration going out and uh, for me it was such an honor and i could totally feel the presence of the goddess aphrodite in me so i i just wanted to have my goddess like pictures and so I was like Michael you gotta take some of these goddess pictures I'll show you in just a second um some of these um let me see so here it was by the way you also see a lot of the carvings in here uh as you see they're just car they're just you know because of the volcanoes and what have you things have fallen apart but you also see a lot of the, if you know what symbology is there's a part i'm going to show you that it's all about okay like here for those of you if you know what symbology is these represent the musical tones and that's why they're there and that's why they had it in some of these ancient theaters like this because these the way the sound vibration comes in creates a certain tone and that's why they would put those it wasn't just for art it was to represent the math mathematical equation of sound when sound is created what goes out for those of you that if you know what you're looking for you know what the, the work that they're doing and um so here is here's um from top what it looked like down so i get a chance to be right in that center and sound and, and i felt like it was just pure magic just pure pure magic like i just felt i was i felt like i was there you and i both mm -hmm. felt we've been there yeah, it was it was it was really uh yeah. comforting to feel like as we sat there the the presence of the energetic um frequencies around us not only from just the gods and goddesses but just this feeling that we see it a lot that when we get there, it's like wow. There's this, there's this feeling of like of, of coming to a place that we've already been to. Yes. And to and to feel that and to integrate that. And really, what I, I'm so blessed with with honey that is is one of the biggest gifts is when we do these plantar healings together, we we feel so deeply of the land, and then yeah. we feel so deeply of the codes that come through us, and then we feel the energy of the islands. And then we're usually in tears because it's such a, a sacred part that, you know, when most go to places, it, it's we, we capture what is. But there's this feeling that when we can actually go beyond what is, because we start to really, I feel like it, it's it's interdimensionally. Like we we we, we, we go into these areas that we're we're feeling like what it was what it was when we were there. What, what it was. was, and that's the thing. Like the visions to showing what was for that's the thing we we sit together and like let's meditate let's let's let them show us what what took place before not what the history said what was the higher vision the purity and i feel like 1010 10 really represented that oneness energy this portal of one this one gateway
the oneness of it for us to tap into and connecting to the purity of all these other islands. And the other part that was shown to me, I don't know if Michael, you want to address that too. It was being shown to me earlier in the day that the Aha, all these islands were obviously connected as, mm-hmm. as one. And what was interesting is that like the center of these islands, all these islands were, were connected. And the very, very center of it was sacred, pure water. And only and this sacred, sacred water was kind of like Avalon, where, where the, the highest purification of the gods and the goddesses to for the ascension that's what we do so so the way these islands were connected the center of it was this very pure blue turquoise water that was so protected by the outside because it was only for gods and the goddesses again for their ascension so kind of like how you know in in egypt they had their pyramids and also they've had pyramids in um in Greece as well, but just differently. But they had their temples for their higher worship. But in Minos, there wasn't any ancient temple left. Mm-hmm. It was uh, just some of the land, and um, and we wanted to get to the the other last fourth mm-hmm. portion of the day, which was to get on top of the uh, prophetess Eli that that oh, mountain. So but we couldn't. We we just couldn't get to it. We were absolutely exhausted by 4 p.m. And I thought what was really beautiful, thank you for sharing that, because in that sacred turquoise center, I was also aware that I've seen this in each of the islands, is when going deep into the meditation visualizations, is really seeing how there's a foundation of crystalline energy in the island, deep into the mm-hmm. ground. And as we walk on these islands, you, you we see these these amazing rocks, but not like the amazing rocks, but in the rocks are these crystalline formations. And each time that we've gone deep into the plant here healing, I'm brought directly into the center, way, 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 way yeah. deep. And I've had profound areas where I haven't really spoken to because they're so personal, but it's just surrounded by just deep, deep levels of sparkling crystal crystals. Yeah. And this crystal energy, um, we know that it's not only connecting each of the islands in this dimension, but in other dimensions, which we'll speak yeah. about later in, in later videos, that we keep watching the links between all the islands and how they're connected. And, and it was, but it was it was in Milos that I'm glad you brought it up because it was in Milos on ten ten again that I that I felt I, that I felt and I saw that there are there are the islands that are physically visible and then there are the interdimensional exactly. islands yeah. that are filled in the in the Aegean Sea and the Cyclades. Mm-hmm. It is filled and it's all part of the higher world, the higher um, the higher world of uh, the golden age that that it is so interesting. I never I never really realized that and its connection to Egypt, because it's right there. So there's this part of the Egypt, there's Greece, but Greece plays even a higher role than Egypt. Um, and, and that's why I, I'm, I began to finally realize why we're positioning Greece before we could go with right. Egypt, we, that Egypt sort of went this way. But no, for, for, for bringing through the golden age, there is this network of light that is connected to all of these islands are connected physically and interdimensionally. And there are crystalline codes within each of the islands that we needed to make that that connection between all of mm-hmm. them. So that way the spiraling energy can radiate. So this the crystalline the crystalline rose, the crystalline diamond rose of the Christed light can fully ex- expand because where it's positioned, it goes to the Middle East, it goes to the Europe, mm-hmm. it goes north, it goes south. It, it's so it's profound where it's, 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 it's positioned. It's in the center. It is in and, the and, center. And how interesting it being in the center of also seeing where our um, movement coming from, you can imagine like a Mykonos, Santorini and then Milos, we were going in a diamond frequency and how important yeah. that was 
to be above Egypt, to be below Europe, to be to the left of, of the Middle East, and really in a center, right, right in the center of the Mediterranean Sea. So to have that and then to be aware, which we both saw, the energies of the islands, the interdimensional, and the connections that kept coming through on each of the sacred areas that we were at. It was really yeah, powerful. so it was really powerful, and we both felt so fulfilled and ten ten. We felt like, wow, like, okay, so he, here's how we needed to serve this, because this this island is so raw and it's sacred, divine, feminine, but and it's it is that energy of Aphrodite and this Aphrodite, the beauty of the golden. It, it's just it needs to really be expanded. It's not just the sex, it's the divine beauty, the divine art. We not notice that the, that elegant the beauty is really missing here because the beauty of the heart is so close in the people. Like again, like we saw it in, in Sophia, where we, right. in Milos, we could feel her beauty, but we haven't been able to feel people's beauty because it's so rough right. and like just so it's such a head energy yeah. here and i feel with the is because it was such beauty of the land the land was so rough we could feel the beauty of the land come through our hearts and yeah. as it came kept coming through our hearts we were like little kids just dazzled be dazzled because we kept going to different beaches and we kept finding areas that were like wow it was just extraordinary there was just such awes in, in these areas i mean it was one thing to be on the land on 1010 and experience what we did yet as soon as we you know completed that it's like another turn another yeah. area another beauty would, would pop up and we just it was just so funny how we how we kept going because we just didn't stop i mean at one point we're just like i remember the one a day that i was like honey I just but i'm still rest. focusing on 10 10. <laughs> you are so cute <laughs> i'm just trying to wrap up 10 because we, we still <laughs> but okay so here's 10 10 again again this was another interdimensional door here it was so beautiful this is again at the ancient theater like just the honor of being here at the right at the bottom of it let me show you this is what the top these are some of the pictures that were there in the doorway these doorways were very powerful we'll get to naxos in a little while so as our work was finished we came back i we were just exhausted i hurt my knee michael had to do some work on my knee and acupuncture and all of that like we just like it just felt like kind of like beaten dogs you know mm -hmm. for several several days because um it's not like it's not like the road is like this or the walking is like this it, i mean it's very much like this jagged and, jagged and, and rough and i fell at one point no that was the other place <laughs> I don't know. There's so much that happened. But anyway, so that was 10 10. Then the next day, we kind of supposedly had our relaxation day. Um, <laughs> so, so we wanted to go explore a little bit more. But let me let me show this to you. By the way, again, kitty cats, kitty cats everywhere. My God. Goddess Bestet was very powerful. This was a morning sunrise, you know. And again, you see a lot of these book incredible of book of years. And look at this kitty cat, kitty cat, like just kitties, like kitties and kitties. And, 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 kitties. What was, what was so and, and th this was where we were. So you can see how like raw it is, like, staying in somewhere that's just super, super raw. It's so nourishing and pleasant. Mm -hmm. And this was the morning of our planetary work right there, seeing a heart. Constantly. And what was so beautiful about Milos is because it's so jagged and rocky, in the mornings we got to do our plant, uh, um, our morning prayers over these areas. Yeah. That, that this was our, this was our right, yeah. right in front of us outside our hotel. Yeah. So we would sit on, the, or I, I went after that tip many times just to um, anchor. By the way, there's Michael being in. And I would sit there, and it was great because you could hear the. It was like the, the sound of the, nature the, from the, under the sound of water connecting to the land. You could see the sunrise over the other mountain or the, uh, up the other islands, and it was just phenomenal to see how all those energies, all those elements, played. Because it's one thing to be on an island, but then to be on the volcanic element on the edge where the water comes in, the winds, the tides, the clarity of the water and then the sunrise. Because you can feel up. like I keep feeling goddess Fira, Kali, Jamanja, Pele, like all of them 
again with between Aphrodite, Artemis, like wow, like of course Athena, like there's just this, like it is so welcoming for those who are ready to be held in that vibration, be bathed in it, and the power of the feminine. And that's where the next day we went to see there was this one area we had to see. So by the way, got a chance to see my uh, my first love making of turtles that was right next to us. Um, look, so pr- I've never seen turtles love make. Just, just the most fascinating, beautiful experience. Did you go down and see that? Oh, yeah, see the next day. Yes, they were, they were so eating cute. the watermelon at the lady the had day to. Um... So the next day we had to go to this place. We'd seen in the picture. Just wanted to experience it. The catacombs, but but the catacombs. There was this one ginormous area where it's just pure white. It was like going to the moon, moon. and finding these beaches that we've never Not seen. Beach. I mean, it was like these cliffs that entered the water, and it was sparkling white, like nothing I've ever seen, nothing that we've ever seen there. And it was phenomenal to look to to swim in the waters, but also just to see such white, white rocky surface accentuate all of the the turquoise waters we, we were really we were just floored we, I mean, it's much. like there's no words to be able to see and then the t- let me see oops where are we okay that's still going um it's connecting Oh, it's still, we're still going. We're still going. Uh, here. So, so anyway, so we get a chance to go through. There's a video that Michael is going to post. It's quite amazing with the tunnels inside the catacombs. But I want to show you this part also. This was the most, truly the most magical, just magical thing we'd ever we just ever seen in our lives um highly recommended i can't remember the name of it it was a greek name kilo 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 we can't recommend this enough. And the next day, then from there, we get a chance to also look. Here's Michael. Mm-hmm. You'll see all those pictures. And from there, we get a chance to go see. Then uh, this is Michael on way above it. It, it, it is a must. I, I don't feel yeah. I've ever seen anything like this in my life. Yeah, we, we, we were. And you get a chance to, we both got a chance to go in the water of it too, and which was so refreshing. And it, um, it's like it's like imagine a portion of an island that just turns to complete stark white, yeah. and that stark whiteness all of a sudden opens up to these formations where it just takes your breath away because there's just there's just so much there that you're just in awe. Of, of yeah, sleep. like you come in and this is what you see. Like it's unreal. Like you don't your eyes just doesn't know how to take it in. Yet it recognizes like an ancient part of you. I felt I felt. This island was super galactic. Mm-hmm. I mean, super, like I really felt the strong, like Syrian presence here, mm-hmm. like just so strong with the Syrian energy. And, and from, when, from there, then we drove, we went to another, another part, which was so beautiful as, you know, you come down, you see these little things and the water is like super clear. So, again from top we get a chance to just drive around go to a few places because one of the things that michael and i felt like we would love to do a we really felt called to do a private couples retreat just two couples to really there's so many romantic places here and so adorable so precious and just the nature holds you so much so we felt like we wanted to explore the areas and where to take the couples to. So the 
nature will support their union. And that's what we're putting together with Sophia um, because we definitely yeah. want to collaborate with her place that's just so precious and adorable. And, and I find what's, what's amazing, I keep going back to the nature of it, is one thing that Honey and I notice with the island is in Milos, because there's so many different areas of where it's temperate, where the wind is is being focused for energy coming, that a lot of these areas are protected by the wind. So that in one area of the island, if it's very, very um, windy, the next part of the island is very calm. And when yeah. you go into these little in, in um, these little areas, look, it's, it's, look it's very it secluded in that. So it's, it's phenomenal to see that you can go to different areas, different the south coast, the east coast, the west coast, and, and you find how you can really temper yourself against the winds that would be in place there. Right. Again, you go from a like again a formation like this to then like this, and it constantly and then to this one was very interesting. We didn't even bother going down because it was just so. That's all it is. And here, the, these are the Fisher villages. And these homes, they actually rent those. But everything was closed because it's the end of the season. So, and of course, we had these funny videos that I posted, like the tiny little streets that we would get caught on. And what was so interesting for me from Milos was that I had these weird fears coming up in Milos. Like these tiny little, to let them know these tiny little streams. Maybe afterwards. What is it? Get what? Oh, okay. So, so it was so interesting. I had these little tiny fears coming up in me, and these fears were like, for example, these tiny little streets, like. Like as if the car is gonna get stuck in these tiny little streets. And because we had that experience in Morocco before, I just felt so uncomfortable with that. The other part of it was, for example, um, we would go to these raw raw beach. I'm gonna show you this one particularly. This this one was our favorite. This is called the Golden Beach. This was absolutely remarkable. The color was pure golden, the color, and look at that giant heart. And the rays of golden light, I really felt the crystalline Christ light here so much. It's so, so nourishing. You can literally see it. And here is my feet in the water. You can see how clear it is. Just absolutely spectacular. Look to the eye. And... Um, you can tell her like we're having the bread and the things we're keeping here to eat. And um, again, these were the uh, a lot of the hearts that we got a chance. Why? Why? A lot of the this this happens a lot here. By the way, the winds are so high; they keep like closing and opening, you know. And um, and you get a lot of the sunsets like this here. Um, the other part that I wanted to share was there was this, th this island also has this thermal uh, water where um, people go in there in the thermal water and it's super hot from the volcanic where you can really just put the, you know, sand, go sit in it, but you got to be careful because you can burn easily and, and to help you. So it was so interesting. Michael put some of the volcanic things on my on my knee which was so healing and um and that was something remarkable the other part speaking of the little fears like there was this one beach we got to here it was so it was so raw here like that so oh and michael you can just take it out it's on the left i'm sorry one second the, the, the it's to the left, sweetie. Look right there, micro far left, far left by this right thing. Here. Yeah, the yeah. So, so this, this for example that we got to was so raw, so so raw. You saw some of these pictures, and as we walked towards them, I found myself. Look at these. We like tiny little things walking. Here's Michael walking towards it. The things that I, f I found myself like very uncomfortable, unstable, as if these rocks would just fall. And I kept having these 
feeling because the, the, the rock beams were so powerful. The power of the feminine was so strong there that it actually I felt like it, it really overpowered me, I felt. Right. And it overpowered me in its in its rawness, in its power with the water. And I felt like they would just fall. And um, I kept having these irrational fears of going either off the cliff or or these rocks falling yeah, on us. We, we would walk yeah. the beaches and they would be so extraordinary because you would see these you know, hundred foot rocks real jaggedy. And of course, you know, on a bad rainstorm or wind, you would, you would come, but there would be points that were so beautiful that we'd be walking and it was just interesting to see honey, honey, um, they allow the fear come to her. And, 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 like, I, and, and it's like the rocks that, you know, we saw and the energy that we saw there, it was, it was beautiful, but at the same time, there wasn't anything falling down to a lot of people there. But they had signs everywhere, rocks falling, rocks falling. On and the roads, not on, on the beaches. But on the be this particular one, they had several of them. Be okay. careful. Okay. They had a lot falling. And this one was the most, um, I don't know, it was quite, quite something for me, this one. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great because this is also the experience of being there feeling it feeling the depth of it and experiencing what it's like to be in the presence of such rawness mm -hmm. the beauty of it where it just overtakes you and it, it and it and it does show your insecurities and even mm -hmm. i found my insecurity in that presence that it it, it brought up yeah. fears like um on stability right right and to know that the most important thing is when they do make roads they're not going to make roads where cars will clip off them no matter it's like i feel like the car is going to go like what, this or like this there's roads that are like this i've driven on roads where i've had to gun my old jeep all the way up the road and they don't they don't make roads to flip off them they just make roads to you know to, to narrow them down so that the whole point is just to trust that whatever road it may be or whatever beach it may be that it's not going to come affect you and just to you know embrace that versus allow that to you know <laughs> deter, deter you from enjoying the moment so um those of you who are joining us on live stream um uh, we uh, we're coming towards the end of it because the the video turned yeah it turned off so we have the whole thing on our youtube live stream that's still going and you get a chance to watch that regarding our planetary work with 1010 and this is in Milos and as we wrap this up. And finally, we wrap Milos with our last night in Plaka, having this beautiful romantic dinner and this cute cuteness. And what was so remarkable was the food that, again, um, I'll, I'll show the, this part to you. Um, just, I, I found all kinds of, hard rocks everywhere which we'll, we'll talk about this in a second just hard rocks everywhere so beautiful again this is that one place um that's so absolutely remarkable so we went and what was so beautiful this one traditional place they would gather the herbs around the island they would bring it with the uh, of course the goat um cheese mm -hmm. um and um, the fried zucchini. and the fried zucchini, and they would create they could create this with this um, watermelon um, sort of like um, how, what would, not dip. What would it be? They, they put a glaze the over glaze that, that, over. that wrapped over around the, these beautiful um, spinach balls that were had all these. Um, herbs from the islands like so, this one so they use it was the watermelon incredible and, so forth. and it's it was the wonderful to see how in each of the islands they prepare their foods uniquely different yet these ones were something we've never had before they were like quite extraordinary because this one restaurant you could feel really their beautiful sincerity like the waiter was singing as he as he came through the the owner or the manager there kept so coming friendly over and asking oh my english is not that good but they gave us these points that we were so happy that actually customers from Vermont came and said, well, what are you having? Because your excitement of what you're eating, we just, we, we were curious because you guys looked like you were so happy. Like, yeah. what are you guys going to eat next? What's your dessert? And we just, you know, honey and I, we're, we're like little foodies. children. And we, we love great we, we allow our food. innocence, whether it's, 
you know, venturing around the island, eating, and we go through the whole day allowing our passion of life just to really embody us as we, um, you know, fully. I mean, look at exotic things like the, the, I've had zucchini flowers before, but the way they made it was remarkable, just remarkable. It was just so satisfying, especially after we finished everything. And just to show you again, a little bit of the sun, you know, a little bit of the sunset and, it's just it's just remarkable and these were some of the rocks and uh that was fun a lot of crystalline and here's i am between rocks just all kinds of rocks and um and again the cats 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 the step energy was so strong we feeding the cats too and uh uh, the only other part I want to share also, Michael going nuts with ice cream. The ice cream here. Yeah, was, <laughs> I have yeah. that hand <laughs> all over your mouth. You loved it. Yeah, it's there was in, in Greece, they have these little um, cones filled with ice cream. I don't know what they put in them, but it's unbelievable to feel the energy as you eat it to, to fully ignite. And um, I felt like every time I ate, I just like jumped into my like inner child like wow and they were only 50 cents yeah so that was we, great the food started. for vegetarian is I mean, it's a little the, the one thing that's interesting when you're saying we're vegetarian they're like why that 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 consciousness doesn't resonate at all and like at all and, and and you are looked at like really something is very wrong with you it's very very interesting but the way we wrapped up milos we went to we went to the airport smallest little airport so precious i put that video there and of course you know um so we go through it and then and then and then and then, meanwhile we're in the front of the line so it's a bit we're on spotlight because we have about 30 people behind us and so i have my my check on and i have all the rocks that we've collected from the different islands and it was crazy because when i went through she's like no but i went through first right. i went through first and she's like you have rocks so she started taking it and and we had put the rocks aside from the santorini and these are all to give go away you know so she started taking it so violently throwing in trash i'm like oh my god so then michael came how through. they sounded when you throw in the trash like boom because the trash can was empty and imagine a bag of rocks Throwing it was like dong, so disrespectful. Dong. So she took honeys and honey just sat there and I was I really congratulated honey because you know I've seen honey get pretty upset and she just looked at this like kind of like are you kidding me? Me, I have rocks everywhere. I have one in my Scattered pouch, I have everything. Everywhere. So she was like the rock torture queen because every time I went through, she's like, I see more rocks. Put your bag through. So I must have put my bag through five different times because go through the security through line security, five times. More rocks. But you more were rocks. treated like total criminal, yeah. as I was. We were treated as such criminals because of these rocks, which we didn't know. We didn't know in Milos you can't actually Santorini right. And, other, and I think part of it we also. But for learned, Milos, just FYI, you're not allowed to bring rocks, just and, so that you know. I think part of it, which which is the deeper point and the deeper honor of it, is. You know, when we do receive from the land, maybe to take one or two versus like 20 or 30. We were so excited. You know, because we, 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 we had so many of them and next time put them on our travel. But it just, it got to a point where we were just kind of like little kids with chocolate being taken away from us. Because as, as, as it kept being taken away, it was at one point where I was like trying to like hide in my pockets as I was walking through security. And finally, when we went through, we walked on the plane. We both looked at each other in exasperation. Like, Are you kidding me? But it was, for me, it was more than just the rocks. It was, there was such a violent act. Mm -hmm. We had done so much beauty and service to the land. Meeting like this total opposition of the sacred divine feminine energy in the land. You know, and that's what it was. And it actually, if it, it had an impact on I me mean, from there, you know, we were coming back to Athens. I, I felt I was affected. I, I was affected by it for a couple of. Mm -hmm. I felt a couple of days because that the energy was so harsh. It was so harsh, like and and the way again, like we were major criminals over these rocks. And then when and then once we finally got cleared, then the lady behind me went and she's like, "You got a rock too." And she's like, "Oh, I have a rock." And it was just funny because when we got to the plane. We were just sitting there and then we kind of like went through like oh there's a couple more rocks you can get there's a couple more here 
point being is we learned from one of our friends that we met on the plane that in certain areas of the islands, there are very precious rocks. There are precious like minerals Milos. and there's precious areas. We do understand that it takes a rock from the area. You know, it is it is of honor and respect to the land. So we do honor yes. and respect that we don't have to take elements of it if we are going to honor it maybe take one or two maybe not a bag full of them. but it was disappointing because honey did want to create a lot of the um just the art. art yeah the inspired by here and the light language on them so it's letting go and it was letting go so we we got to athens and when we got to athens we had to go to delphi right away and we'll do a full video on that later because we from there we'll cover the work in delphi in Acropolis, and from there we came to Naxos and um, for the 1019 work, and now we're on Mars as we leave tomorrow. So I feel we'll leave it. Um, maybe we do that um, tomorrow, the next day, sure. the yeah. next day before we leave. I feel that would be good. Then we wrap yeah. this series up. So I wanted to give you a little heads up. So a couple of personal things. I absolutely fell in love with Milos. We look so forward in doing our sacred couples retreat there because I feel that that island was so beautiful for five, six days do this amazing retreat with just just two couples. That's a very private, very exclusive. We'll get uh, two rental cars, so one I'm driving, one is Michael driving, and we really give you the experience because we felt wow, this is so sacred. Mm -hmm. And That's to collaborate with Sophia because her, her place holds the energy for two couples to stay there too and collaborate and just the sweetness that we saw for others to experience and take him to all these incredible places that we found. And Milos, I really feel what for me, it is a place that you can really relax and chill because it really provides the, when we, when we went there, you could see that from the beaches to the geography to the energy, it's really what I see that Greek and especially the islands of body is something very similar to Mexico. It has this serene, peaceful feeling. When yeah. you can tap into that energy of the land, it really gives you that ability. For Honey and I, obviously, we have adventures at our heart, so we tend to explore like, you know, little missionaries that are heading everywhere. But we could see that each area that when you really just tap into, it really gives you the softness and this peace of the land. I feel Milos has that as rugged, as raw and uncut it is. It does give you that that time just to really anchor yourself in, and, and it's less beauty. touristy, yeah. and I mean, it really Very peaceful. And, and well, and, well, less lesser known of the island, yeah. and totally easy to get and to. Undeveloped, and, undeveloped, and, and has cute, precious little towns from Polonia yeah. to Placa to. Even the port. It was one of the most beautiful ports out of all the ports that we've seen. Very truly very, adorable. Very, very, and very clean. The water is precious. It felt like everything when, was very when, clean. When, when we went there, there's not like any major tides or you know rip currents or just the waters in, in Greece I feel are just very gentle. Even with the winds, when the currents go, it's not like something any dangerous that yeah. I would see in Mexico or other seas that you have to be careful with. So it, I, I feel like the waters are so purifying and as chilly as it may seem in late summer early fall we really were nourished by yeah we, we were would, totally we, we, as, in the water as we drove around we would jump into the water get back in because we felt like it's just this constant level of medicine for us yeah and we felt like we felt very fulfilled in in so grateful being in Milos in serving the 1010 and then we can take that energy we had needed to connect it to Delphi, we need to connect it to Acropolis and then the work in Naxos before we wrap everything us, go back to US for 11-11. So we felt we, we felt very completed, we felt so honored, and we really felt the, the presence of the still the Egyptian um, energy so much of the gods and the goddesses with us, and especially for me, with the cats really represented goddess. Bastet so much. She was so present in my in my field, and um, so um, we, we we couldn't have been more grateful. We couldn't have been more grateful to Sophia again. What a sacred being! And again, there are these angels that appear in your life when you've gone through all these challenges, and and then you come together and you experience something completely different that wins your heart. And we, for that, we're very, very grateful. And I feel that what we really, I feel was the biggest gift is 
you know, we were positioned in a place that we wouldn't have had the, just the softness. We were going, planning to go to Egypt and with Milos coming our way, I really felt like it shifted the energy from a place that would have been a little more chaotic, a little bit a bit more intense. The culture would really place us in a realm that I feel would overwhelm us of where we were. To hear us, but also the ability where we could be ourselves. I feel like when the, the Moroccos, the Egypt, the Middle East, because foreigners are like white flags coming out of nowhere, like we are on spotlight. And Milos, you can blend in anywhere. You can take your clothes off and jump into the water. You can do what you want because it's very, it's very chillax there. And with Egypt, I feel like we would have to be on, we would have to be guard, we have to really be yeah. at our topmost. So I feel that Milos was a, was a gift for us. And what we learned is to really embrace the Greek God and goddess culture that shifted. We really opened ourselves up for more adventures that are coming, which we'll share. In the next yeah, day. we'll share. I feel like because today is our Paris day, very uh, chill day. Tomorrow we leave to Athens. And the next day, we in the evening, we fly to US. So then that next day is going to be the good day. So we wrap up everything, the video on we arrived in Athens and the car rental on the way to, again, Delphi, Acropolis, who we met, came back. And there's quite a bit to share on that. And just this level of work we completed. And as we are wrapping up, um, it's been quite amazing. And again, we can't recommend it enough. Easy flight to Milos and... And you can also, if you've come, let's say to Paris, to Naxos or even Saturn, you can get a um, ferry to go over yeah, there. But so, everything so. is pretty much shut down in uh, in Milos right now, so we wouldn't recommend it now because it's, I mean it's just dead. And so is uh, we just came from Season Naxos is June, just finished. Here is just finished, so we have really one more day. We've yeah. done. We've been the last guest of places. So, yeah. anyway, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry the also the live stream on uh, on uh, Facebook didn't quite work work well but this is available um we're so grateful for those of you who've been following us and journeying and just celebrating all that we've shared and we do feel we're part of um, the greater collective experience of the planetary ascension so each of you tuning in you're also tuning to what is extended out so for that we're very grateful and we look forward to being of greater service once we leave here we come back with our events and the healings and all that is ahead for the month of November and December because we wrap up this decade, this decade because everything is all about getting ourselves ready for 2020, which I'm, I couldn't be more grateful yeah. for. So, and like a house house to all of you, thank you for being with us. Thank you.